All right, hopefully everybody has three pieces of paper with them. Green, yellow, and pink. If you don't have all three, raise your hand high in the sky with pride. Elbow high. We'll help you get them and we'll all be ready to roll because this isn't about me, it's about you and who you leave with and walk away with as your professional learning network. I'm sure you had something on Twitter, everybody's got an email. You need a pen or pencil, we're going to share ideas and post them on the wall and you're going to be able to go over and use your camera and figure out who else does stuff. You leave here with more people in your network that's going to help you continue to do. I would like to thank Ember and Des for the opportunity to be here. Let's give them a round of applause. This is a great class. This is a great workshop. I've been to over 100 workshops. This is easily in the top. Top three. Easily. The other two, I haven't been to yet. So, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. All right. And also, I'd like to thank a gentleman. Uh, I don't see him here. But this is my second opportunity to present in the state of California. And if you know him, make sure you say hi and... and let him know I really appreciate it too. But Seth is the one that got me to come to Cape a few years ago. So let's give it up for him because he does a great job. <laughs> Short and sweet. CSI. That's not mine originally. But connect, share, and inspire. I'm going to help you guys connect with each other, share ideas, and hopefully inspire. And you inspire each other and your students. As was shared earlier, I am from Virginia. From way over here near Washington, D.C., close to Alexandria, Charlottesville is two and a half hours away, so if you know somebody there, I don't know them. All right, and it's all the way down here is Virginia Tech. They're six hours away. I don't know them. And then here's Virginia Beach down here, Hampton Roads, all that stuff. I might know them, all right, because I-95 goes up and down. It's only a third the size of California, but you folks seem to all know each other, so it's a pretty good deal. I don't know what's going on. All right. I'm probably somebody you've never met before, but even uh, let's make it even more unique. I'm actually originally from Delaware, the first state, first in something, right? We beat Rhode Island in an arm wrestling competition. All right, so I am a Philadelphia Eagle fan. If you have to put the word Philly in front of it, it's not a cheesesteak. If it says steak and cheese, it's not the original thing either, okay? It's a cheesesteak. Phillies. That's right, baby. And... The best kind of crabs to have. Maryland blue crabs right there from the Chesapeake Bay. Right there. You gotta, you gotta try Dungeness. I've tried them. I'm back. Okay. Okay, so moving on. <laughs> That's the family. I'm really lucky. Yep, the three most important women in my life. My wife and my two daughters. All right. So anybody that says, man, that guy's over the top. I don't know if you've ever met Brian DeVore. He spent a night at our house and he says it's a total beat down on John the entire time. So... I get to be who I can be, and my wife's standing there nodding, thinking, you know it's true. All right? And we're really close to being almost, we have one more year of college tuition. One's moving out in a month, and then it's good. we're going to be able to, all right, you know? We'll have to go to the fridge, and there's still going to be food in there. I'm not going to have to worry about significant others and boyfriends emptying my fridge. It's like, oh, my gosh. I'm all right? My background, I try to do a little track and field. Um, I always had one of those ready for the officials on the sideline of football games in college. Uh, I coached a little cross country. I just told them, run fast, but not fast enough that you're in front of everybody and you don't know where you're going. All right, just pass them at the end when you see the finish line. And then I'll tell you what, you know, when you have to supplement your uh, income after being a dad sitting up there watching my daughter play floor ho or field hockey, it's floor hockey, really, and sitting there and listening to the dads all have it, just, you know what, I said, I'm going to go be an official. So I sit there, and now I officiate. Pays 170 bucks a night for two games. Why join the gym? I just jog up and down the sideline, blow the whistle, foot, just point with authority. The girls don't even know anyway. They just go with it. You're like, yeah, let's go. And you just go. And I'm thinking, this is great, you know. So there's 12 rules. I know three of them. All right, so. <laughs> okay, a little bit about, I taught elementary for nine years. I got called on that last night. Someone goes, oh, you said you taught for a decade. I did the math. It's nine. Sorry, okay. All right, I did for nine. I've taught middle school, high school. I'm in an alternative high school now, and I'm an adjunct at a Northern Virginia Community College. I teach the one-credit physical activity class, six sections of it, an hour from home. And if you think you get excuses from little kids, wait till you have a junior college kid. Oh, coach, you wouldn't believe it. My car broke down. Son, I saw you. You walk. You have a bike. You don't even have a car. Oh, no. All kinds of excuses. It takes it to the whole next level. All right. My vision and what I try to do. Real simple. I came up with that on the plane after about three cups of coffee. I aspire to inspire the innate desire. I hope to get you to really go after what you want to do. Everybody talks about goals. 
We all know short-term goal, just get through this and get to lunch. <laughs> long-term goal, live a long, healthy life, have a great retirement plan, and sit down wherever you want to be, in the mountains, by the pool, by the ocean, doing your thing. It's that intermediate goal, and that's what I try to work on all the time. Where are you going to be in two years? Where are you going to be in five years? And how are we going to get you there? That's the tough one. I've had conversations with a few of you here in this room, and you've asked me questions, and I'm thinking to myself, what am I going to be doing in two years? I don't know. And I've had some people in this room really help me out, and you're going to know, because I'm going to put you on the spot and throw the ball to you, and you're going to have to share something here, so be on the lookout for that. <laughs> right now, people are like putting their hands down. Yeah, here it is. All right? Be ready. Yeah, be ready, this guy. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> What do we do? We work on finding solutions to the many hurdles in life. I was a hurdler. Can you tell what lane I was in? That's me, okay? That's me. Oh my gosh, I can't believe it. All right? And this is a lot of our students. And it's our job to help them end up being like these people here. But we all have these hurdles. We all have those days. Who's ever had that day you're just like, oh man, I don't even want to get out of bed. And, and you don't even realize it's Saturday. <laughs> you still, oh man, it's like, oh. oh. Because no matter what, when you teach elementary, you get the, how many of us have the side of your thigh hurts? Hey, 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 hey. All right? So all of you that teach kindergarten, I have no sympathy, and I'll show you. All right? I teach the two-year-olds in the daycare at my alternative high school. They're the children of the moms and the teachers and people in the community. Now, the moms, it's about 300 bucks a week. The moms, they pay 10 bucks a week. They're supplementing. They get a little help if they have good grades, so we're helping them out. But they're like, Joach, Joach, Joach. So I get to hear at the knee, all right? It's like, oh. So you sh and then you go to practice later in the day, and it's like, hold on. You're talking to a 17 or 18-year-old. Listen, I can get a 2-year-old to do this. How come I can't get you to do this? Because you think too much. Just do it. Big advantage of being in elementary. If you do coach, you know that if you can work with those young kids and get them to do it, and how many of us have ever evaluated what we do for what we do coaching through what we do teaching, and the only reason you're good at coaching is because you're an excellent teacher. Where are you? Let's give it up for those people because you're the ones that are building it every day. I went too far. I went too far. There we go. And now I'm slowing down. What happened when? Oh, it made it up. All right, thank you. There's my mission in life. Help kids and help people who help kids. Administrator gets in your grill, says, hey man, no, no, no. I said, hold on, are you talking about helping kids or helping people who help kids? Because I'm worried about some adult that got themselves all worked up over something. That's not the concern. I'm helping kids and people who help kids. If it's anything else, I'm moving on. Life's too short. Sometimes we lose focus of that. You're helping kids and people who help kids. You want to steal that? That's fine. I'm going to get to my philosophy, which is a simple three little thing, and I've been real fortunate a couple of the college professors that I've had for a master's program are actually principals, and they'll give me a call, and I've worked for a couple of them in schools, and they'll be like, John, I had one of your college students. And how do you know? Oh, because they recited your philosophy exactly as their own. And I said, did they footnote it? And they went, no, and then, but then I say, oh, you know, John, steal it. It's short, it's sweet, it's to the point, it's easy, and it keeps us focused. We'll go over that in just a sec. I have the goal of presenting in all, 20, or all 50 states. I've got 25 down, 25 to go. You see you guys are pretty much isolated out there. All right. Was going to pick up New Mexico on the way home. This is how many people signed up for their state convention. So for this number of years in a row, they canceled. So never doubt how important opportunities for professional development like this right here, with all the people wearing the purple shirts and the rainbow tie-dye shirts, those people are putting on a first-class opportunity. Never doubt how important that truly is. I am proud to say I'm going to pick off Wyoming in November in Tennessee. Um, the A's have me, just like my report card in life. I just couldn't get any of the A's, and I don't have any of the A states here. I'm, just, I'm working, but, you know, I'm doing the best I can. I don't know what's going on. i got a lot of M's. Got them out of the way, but I don't know. All right, I owe it all. This guy right here, this is Henry Castelvecchi. You want to take a picture so you can get on his website or follow him on Twitter? He made a Weebly site, and some of us talked about that. He just did his name.weebly.com. His site is free. He promotes his school from that. He's the executive director in Virginia. 
And if anybody here has ever been part of your state board, you know the executive directors get together two or three times a year and somebody goes, man, we need a presenter. And he goes, I know a guy. And because he did that, I'm standing here today. <laughs> sorry, sorry. I'm actually a big crybaby, so i got to be careful. All right, so, and he, he's, he's promoted me and shared and, and given me the opportunity to move on. Um, he's been Southern District Elementary PE Teacher of the Year. His wife has been uh, Health Teacher of the Year. They both do presentations. Terry, you know Henry? You're going to meet Henry. He's the one that knows every bylaw for everything all the way up and down the scale, so every executive director ends up calling him. All right? And I owe a lot to him. There's another guy that I owe a lot to, too. Some of you might know him. His name's Alex, but uh, he's up in the state of Washington, and he always does this, so we're going to get... Is there anyone in the room who doesn't know who this gentleman is? Please raise your hand, Mike. It's okay. Are you kidding? Right, raise your hand if you do know who this is. What's his name? So we're going to give two claps and a woo. Ready, everybody? Ready? Rick Flair, the nature boy. He's the only man to ever beat Hulk Hogan three times. Let's put it in perspective. And he's from the great state of North Carolina. And that was the first opportunity I had to present in another state. See, prior to that, all I ever did was present in front of 60 people in the state of Virginia. And everywhere thinks that their state convention is the best. And then there's some of us that have been to a bunch, and we know. And then I went to North Carolina, and they said, he says, John, I promoted you. You're going to do great. I said, all right, great. And I was thinking, you know, like next week at Peach, I'm at 645. A.M. Three days in a row. <laughs> Thank you very much for the opportunity to be here during the daylight. Um, so I was thinking, you know, I'm going to be Sunday morning on the half day at 8 o'clock. Oh, no. I was on the second day, Friday, 11 o'clock, Grandmaster Ballroom A. Chip Candy was down the hall in Ballroom B. I'm like, ooh. He came up and he goes, John, you made it. And I was like, I don't know what I made, but okay. 200 people were in the room, and I was like, whew, here we go. And I just went for it. And I'm really fortunate that a lot of people gave me feedback and said, hey, I like this. Hey, let's try this. And then 100 people come up and go, I do it this way. And I'm like, write that down, put it on the index card, and I sort through them. I go, okay. And then I modify. So anything that looks like it's really good that I've shared with you, it's not mine. I've shared it. I've got it from other people, and I hope you help me modify to move on even more. All right, so let's do it again. It's two claps and a woo for Ric Flair. Can we try it? Ready? Here we go. <laughs> Much better. And that one's for Alex from Focus Fitness. I'm really sorry, Stephanie. I moved out of the way and it did. Hi, there you go. Mom, look, I got a job. All right, so this thing tracks you, all right? I could tell my students I had something to track me, too. All right, here you go. Your boss. Let's talk about this because a lot of people have shared you work for incredible people. The only reason you know that is because you're actually sitting here right now. How many of us got help from their school to get here? Make sure you say thank you. And jot them a little note. Seriously. Men, if you don't want to ask, ask some of the, the women, the ladies. Hey, got any thank you notes in your drawer? Shh. <laughs> Give one to your boss. Really appreciate the support to get there. And you've got to talk it up. And you have to talk it up way in advance. And then when you're with colleagues, you talk it up in front of their boss. Oh my gosh, I couldn't believe it. It was great. I learned so much, took it back, shared. We impacted hundreds of students. And you move on and you do that kind of thing. You keep them in the loop way in advance. You make sure that you're proactive. Just make sure they don't tie your hands. If you're being proactive, you don't have to react to all the things that don't happen. Get on the scheduling committee. How many of us have ever shown up on a Friday morning? You're ready to rock because that lesson has worked all week and you can't wait. And guess what? Oh, we have an assembly in the gym this afternoon. And you're like, it's raining. And you can't go to the library or the media center. Right? Who's with you? Who's ever had that? You better have one. Better... Okay, I got a whole bunch of ideas. Right? Pfft, got nothing. All right? Stay proactive. Get everything going. And share this with the new people who come into the profession. Not just the young college kids, but the people that transfer and come in from another, well, you know, work, uh, another type of uh, environment from working. And they, sh and they come in and they're second career people. They don't realize these things either. You know a lot of things. You know a whole lot. And we're going to share some of that here. Right here, right now. Take your green one. Take your green one. Okay? Across the top. Jot your Twitter handle or your email address. Make sure we can read it. Just share how someone else could get in touch with you. Right across the top. And then, in the big space, tell us, what is your best field day activity? What is the bread and butter? It doesn't matter what happens, you're doing that every year. What is it? Because we're going to collect these and slap them on the wall right over there, and then everybody's going to have a whole bunch of new resources. 
you're going to say, well, I want to know what blah, blah, blah is, and guess what? The person's contact info is right there. So write down the contact information, write down your best field day activity. Don't look at someone else's. Even if she's your coworker, come up with something else. <laughs> it's like, we do it again. This morning, I would ask the volunteers to help out. If you would take your sheet and just pass it towards the stairway that's closest to you, one way or the other, and then we'll collect those and start putting them on the wall. If we could use that space right there where we are over here, that would be great. Let's pass those green ones over and we're going to be able to start putting them on the wall over there. And everybody just, you take a video and just move your phone gently across and you'll be able to go back and read it all in freeze frame instead of taking a picture that you can't focus in on later. Hey. I just learned about paragraph today. Look at that. That's fantastic. He's taking all the list. Good job. Good job. Help out. Stand up. Move forward. Help him out. Appreciate that. Thank you, ma'am. Right over there on that green mat against the wall. Be great. We can have them overlap. Because everybody that's got something on that wall, you're an expert. There's a wide range when you use the term expert. Some of you might be familiar. Because there's people who are experts and there's people that are considered to be experts. All right, let's all raise our hand if we do not recognize this character. This is everybody who's 30 and under or doesn't watch Nick at Night. Taxi. You don't know? You hired people who don't know who that is? Take a lap. All right, so. And we need to be careful because everything that's out there on the Internet and people are trying to help and provide information. Let's remember, and I tried to preface this yesterday and I'll, or two days ago, and I'll do it again tomorrow in, in my game session. How, how things I do in my gym might not work at all in your world. They might. And it's not because I'm at a different level. I do it with my high school kids. And I did it with elementary kids. And the only reason I have stuff that works is because I was able to get it to work with elementary kids. So as we move forward, guess what? High school kids should be able to catch on. But your community is completely different. Where I teach and where I coach is only three miles apart. Come on, we'll be on the other side of the planet. And we'll get to that, too. Because here's a huge discussion for a lot of people. An argument that they have. Are you teaching this? Or do you teach this? Or maybe you use something else. Who's back in undergrad right now? Some college classes going, oh my, it's a, I don't know. You remember that? Remember Bloom's Taxonomy? Going right up there. And now there's Webb's Depth of Knowledge. Does anybody use either of these to guide them? Okay, good. Everyone who's evaluated this year is like, yes, I use that. <laughs> I'm being evaluated. I'm using that this year. Well, this is my world. This is where I teach. What I have over here are young adults who have all kinds of life challenges. Maybe I'm dressed in a business shirt and a tie because I'm going to court today or even a job interview. And then here I am Andre the Giant, playing with the rainbow-colored rings, I can throw, I can catch, I can throw high. I need a knee pad for the right knee. I'm down low all day, because then I don't get this. It's like on the shoulder. But I love it. I have them once a week for 45 minutes. There's 20 of them. There's three assistants. They all sit on the side. But, you know, it's uh, they're like, go, coach, go. All right? So I'm all over the place. But a lot of my kids, born in a foreign country, have next to no English, never been in a formal school before, so they think PE in my class is great. They don't even understand the whole locker room, dressing out, don't have any of that. But this is my reality. I don't do Webb, I don't do Bloom. I'm doing Maslow. And I'm doing it even for my high school kids. Hey, did you eat today? What time did you go to bed? A lot of my kids went to bed at 2 or 3. Because after school, they go work, janitorial job, lawn service, trying to do something. I also tell my kids you could have a part-time job. 
You just walk up and down the highway, stop at all the hotels. Hey, we stayed here last week with my basketball team. I think I left my power cord here. They pull out that box. All those cords. Now you have a side business. <laughs> hey, man, I need a cord. I got one for five bucks right here. Ten. Boom, sold. Teach them how to be entrepreneurs. Right, Joey? Is that work up in Canada, too? Entrepreneurs. Self-starters right there. Right? Teach them how to use the Wi-Fi at school. Teach them about battery life conservation. Here we go. And I ask them, why should I hire you? Some of us already know the answer. Raise your hand if you're in the room and you're a poet. These are the people that were in my tech session yesterday. All right. What's the P stand for? Polite. O. On time. E. T. Are you a poet? I have them write P-O-E-T right on their fingers. They come back and go, Coach, I got the job! And I'm like, excellent, where am I not going to eat again? All right, so you find out real quick. Yeah, I ain't going there, let me tell you that right now. Why should I hire you? I'm polite, on time, enthusiastic, and trustworthy. And this is what I'm teaching my high school kids. These are the kids you're looking for in leadership development in the elementary level. This is who you're trying to hire, right? you got the whole realm right here. It's good stuff. And you can come up with your own. This is how I got through college. Remember the 12 cranial nerves? On Old Olympus. Remember that? What was it, a German and a Finn? I don't know, had a ukulele and did some singing. I don't remember that. But I got like eight of them and I was good, right? Here's my philosophy. First thing. I'm sorry. Always looking to learn new things. Always. Always looking to learn new things. That's why I'm here. I guarantee I learn more here being up here and doing this and presenting than you do from me. I surely do. Because I have to learn how to modify things, how to make sure I include everybody. Because people share, well, at my school, and I've asked you, how many of you have I asked, hey, what's your situation at your school? How does it work? Anybody? Have I asked anybody in the room now? And people share. Now, next, let's get your yellow sticky. What do you want to learn? in physical education, professional development. What is it you're looking to learn? You come to these, you've got ideas. I want to learn something new. I want to go back to my school with something new. What is it? What do you want to learn? Jot it down. Share your contact info. We'll put it, we'll put it over there. It didn't work on the wall, sorry. We'll put it over there and you can go look. And you might find that you know a lot about something. And now you're going to have a new colleague you can collaborate with. I'm moving too much, I'm sorry. It's okay. <laughs> I'm on AD. I ain't waiting for the other H or the other D. Sure. If you would start collecting the yellow ones, pass them over, share with each other. Truly appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. This is Darren. There you go. We're going to get everybody in on that clap here, you know, by the end of the week. We're going to get that. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. And they're like, what? I want to reference a point in a slide that I had up there earlier. How many of us have children that are adults already? All right, so this next one you're going to get. You're going to really get, okay? Because the first part of my philosophy is always trying to learn new things. The next part of my philosophy is... Optimize what you already know, what you already do. And if you have adult children, that doesn't mean you keep accumulating stuff. That means you get rid of stuff. There's a whole new room, maybe two in your house that are now empty. Who's with me, right? Okay. All right, we can't wait. You look at that. She's up there. All right, there you go. You optimize it, streamline. Maybe you do less, focus and go a little more in depth in something. 
Someone asked me last night, how many jobs do you have? I counted, I think I came up with like nine, right? I do like nine different things, I don't even know. So, optimize. How does this work again? The wheel's already out there, and there's a number of presenters in the room that have shown a number of different things. It's already rolling. Connect with them. Follow up after this conference. Ask more questions, because they have answers. And guess what? You do, too. Ideally, I'm going to get to see you present one day, sooner than later. Because the committee's always looking for people to present, are you not? Yes. There you go, there's your plug, okay? So, what's it, a 10% discount? No, 20%. I'm just I think the most important part of my three point philosophy is learn new things, optimize what you know and do. Come on, baby. Have fun. Have fun. Many of, you, ooh, there you go. many of you already know, your class is the number one thing in the head of how many of your students? Yeah. And three quarters of the teachers as they run down to the restroom, right? All right, so, <laughs> you're it, you know? And you've got that one teacher that's always three minutes late picking their kid up, and next thing you know, then you've got the next person who's right after them who's three minutes early, and then you've got 700 kids in the, in the gym, you're like, come on, man, you know, you're up there doing hand puppets or whatever you can do to keep them, right? You're it. You are it. You are the closest thing to a professional athlete and Olympian in their life. You better know everything. And if they're a fan of a team from somewhere else in the world, you better know about that too. Do I have anybody that knows British soccer? My team is Sunderland. Yeah, they're the worst. That's why I root for them, okay? It's the underdog. Everybody knows that you are, you know, it's like, oh, Manchester, whatever, right? Sunderland, they're the worst ever. So everyone knows, oh, wow, he actually knows. I don't. I just know that that's the worst team, and you give that one, everybody thinks you know. But you go with it. But you got to have fun. If, got to go where? I'm not jumping on the bandwagon, Easter. I'm sorry. <laughs> we are Sunderland. We are in last place. All right, so. But we have fun. And your kids leave, and, they're, and they can't wait to get back for the next time. Because you're it. And there's a whole bunch of those kids you wish you could have every day. Who has, this, who has their students see them every day? You got four days a week? Wow. And where are my people that see them twice or less a week? You have even more work to do. You have even more work to do. This is probably the most important one we're going to do right here, building on some advocacy. What do we need to do as a community to move phys ed forward? What do we need to do? Terry has the answer. Shh, no looking on Terry's face. She's on the committee. Well, I think there's more than one answer. This is a very subjective question because your perspective is completely different from somebody else's because of where you teach and what you do. So as we collect these and put these in a pile, read through them and see what other people think we need to be doing. And then, you know what? You might not have thought of that point. And then you can move forward thinking that way. I truly appreciate how you folks are actually writing stuff down. Thank you. <laughs> I did this once and it was like, Nobody had a pen or pencil. <laughs> you were all passing one pen. If you're on Twitter, I'd highly recommend you jump in and add these four people to follow. If you're, especially if you're new to Twitter, not only do you look at following these people, look at who they follow and just continue to branch out. I look at Twitter as your own free magazine. There's people that put out great stuff. And whenever you want, you just look at it. We don't all read the newspaper every day, but you know that when you do pick it up, there's certain parts you want to see. That's what we look at Twitter. You don't ever have to write. You don't ever have to tweet. Thank you very much for your help. But those free resources are still out there for you. Scott, Scott Williams at MLSPE. It's Meriwether Lewis. He has his own YouTube channel, the same one. He's a dance expert was runner-up for National Dance Teacher of the Year. 
He's been Southern District Dance Teacher of the Year, Virginia Elementary School Teacher of the Year. He gets all of the men in his school, administration, teachers, custodians, and bus drivers, and films them doing dance routines together. So he breaks down that entire wall. It's the men of Meriwether. And he has about 15 different dances with them. Then he has the rest of the faculty. He has kids. He also does summer camps. He does workshops on that. And he is a hardline vegan. He won't even go through the x-ray machine at the airport. He goes on the side and gets the wand. It takes forever when we travel together. I'm like, dude, let's go. And then finding a restaurant. In his summer camp, the kids get all vegan food and don't even realize it. Almond butter everywhere. And they all eat healthy. And he says, the parents say, oh, kids come home. They're worn out. They're not hyper. They go to sleep. They're not touching their electronic stuff. And, just, and I'm like, he's a fantastic resource. Charlotte, riding her boat. She retired after 31 years. Six months later, she took a job. She goes, I can't do it. I got to go. So she went back to teaching. She was National Secondary PE Teacher of the Year, an expert in the sport education model. So everybody has a job. Everybody has a role. You go to her website. You can follow her on Twitter, and her website's linked there. She gives away tons of resources on her website that you can then incorporate. Worked excellent with upper elementary kids for sure. Brian DeVore, uh, Charlotte is uh, North Carolina. Brian DeVore, he went to North Carolina, but he is in Georgia. He is uh, a board member for the Georgia Board. He was uh, Southern District Elementary PE Teacher of the Year. He was the Georgia Middle School PE Teacher of the Year. He is an administrator and does a lot of work with online PE as well. He is also an outstanding presenter. He gives away a number of resources. And finally, Lynn, who is from New York, she has a series of eight children's books. Have full bleed color all the way to the page. It's great. And your children act them out. Your students act them out. And it works especially well K to four. Because it's language arts and the lessons are built into the book as you read the story. So the classroom teacher can do it from that perspective. You can then play the games that are focused from the book as well. You go to your media specialist to buy the series of the books rather than use your entire budget on it. Cross curricular. I've been very fortunate to see these people present and they all do an outstanding job. Every time I see them and a number of other people in this room, I know who this gentleman is. Unfortunately, I didn't get to go to any of your sessions. I'm sorry. I wish I had. I know that gentleman up there. We've connected a few times. I know this gentleman. We've connected a few times. And I can tell you right now, I'm sorry that I missed your sessions as well, but I've seen her before. Let me tell you, there's some outstanding people in green shirts, but what you probably don't realize is you look in the mirror right now and you're probably even better. See, because when you go over here and look at those, you're going to go, wow, you know what? I'm already on the same wavelength with a whole lot of people thinking what we need to do. I want to learn the same things, but that's even a strength of mine. And look at those activities. I do the same things. Write them down and offer to present. Because we only get stronger as a group unless we all help each other. Because it's all about helping kids and people who help kids. So you have to do more than just your own building. Reach out and share with the other folks. You inspire many more people than you will ever know. They may never tell you but you do. Over your career, you are a hero to thousands, both children and adults. Because every one of us right now, you can think of who that PE teacher was that you met during your professional career that really helped you. Raise your hand if you have one. I'm going to ask you to do something. Find out where they are. Send them a thank you note. Do it. I got one once. It made the world a difference. It's huge. You never know who you're reaching. And it might be that kid that's not athletic at all. The kid that can't walk and chew gum. You're still their hero. And they might never tell you. I went to my mailbox one time after uh, spring break and got a note. Opened it up. I was teaching high school. And we were transitioning back into PE. We had just done nine weeks of health. And unfortunately, the last... Uh, unit that I had to cover right before we finished was suicide. Opened up the note, and I'd thrown one little thing there on the end, and I said, never leave your family behind to wonder what they did wrong. I had a young lady say, Coach, 
My parents are traveling, going back to Korea. My grades are in the tank. I'm an embarrassment, but you said that. And I toughed it out, and I'm still here at school. And she had delivered it Monday morning before I got to school. And I'm like, quiet kid sat in the back of the room. I would have never known that I had made an impact on that kid's life. And I'm thinking, holy smokes. You never know. I like to think the greatest accomplishment in my teaching career is working with Chris Berger. I taught Chris how to jump rope. He's pretty good. See, I had Chris, and unfortunately I didn't videotape it. Chris is my neighborhood. See, because anybody sees me in public and says, Coach Jones, it's a coaching and teaching realm. But if they say, Mr. Jones, that's a kid from West Springfield, I'm going to tune in a little bit quicker. I know that kid's in the community. Our daughters both do community swim, and kids from 5 all the way to 18 are doing it. It's only six weeks in the summer, and my daughters aren't competitive swimmers. They play lacrosse, but they did that. And the families that you connect with and you stay with the rest of your life, and you never know. So it was Mr. Jones. He says, I'm no longer the coolest kid at school. So I said, what? So we taught him how to jump rope. Now, at the same time, at the school where I was at, I had toured. Toward was the Finnish Junior National downhill skiing champion. We had jump rope in the gym. And he goes, what is this? And I said, this is the jump rope. <laughs> he says, we don't have this. And I says, well, it's like you were skiing. And he tried, and he, and this kid, world-class skier, couldn't do it. And I had Chris. But Chris had a little coordination problem, okay? And I adapted something from track and field. We had this kid that was an 800-meter runner. He was a 155. But he was a washing machine. Who's with you? Don't run next to him either because you're going to get fumbled, right? So, really smart old coach says, Jonesy! I say, yeah? He says, give him two batons. Give him two batons? Yeah! So I said, all right, James, we're on repeat quarters today. 65 seconds, got 10 of them. He goes, no problem. Two batons. And he started running. <laughs> and he's pummeling himself. He's like, what? He's finished the first, he throws it down, he goes, Coach, that stinks! And I said, double disqualification. Pick him up. Step on the line. <laughs> Next thing you know, he got down to 148, ground at West Point. And he had command of uh, 3,000 soldiers in, in Iraq. I mean, that's, and he's saying, Coach, how are you? And I'm like, I'm, I'm fine. Am I standing straight up? I'm like, you know, come shake your hand. I'm like, sure, you like, yeah, nice to see you. I remember when you were young. So there I am helping Tord learn how to jump rope, the skier, and helping Chris. So I took with the two batons, and I took a jump rope, and I put both handles in one hand with Chris. And I got it so that he stopped hitting his own foot, and he started out here. And when he got that, I put it in his non-dominant hand. So he had two ropes, handles here, handles here, and they never crossed. And when he got the rhythm down, then he was able to jump rope. See, Chris is blind. I got you with that, didn't I? That was that, yeah, see? And he learned how to jump rope. And I was really hoping that, I, and I didn't, because I had a flip phone at the time, and I, you know, to show, hey, Tord, I got a blind kid jumping rope better than you. Let's go. So then Chris comes, he's going, and he says, Coach, I'm no longer the cool kid at blind school. I said, what happened? He goes, there's a kid who rides a horse. I said, how do you know? <laughs> I said, the teacher told us. The teacher told us. And I said, well, then forget that, son. You're going to be the coolest kid this summer. And against my wife's best wishes, I said, you come up to the high school after the swim meet on this Saturday at 1 o'clock. Bring your mom. Fortunately, she's the sister of a local elected official, so I don't have to worry about it. And I put my sunglasses on Chris, and I said, just keep turning, son. Just keep turning. We did giant figure eights in the, in the parking lot in the driver ed car. So I can now, I can now sit in the driver ed car in the passenger seat with kids that I did just two weeks ago and go, son, I've had a blind kid drive this car better than you. Can we try to stay on the road? So Chris has actually driven a car, and he's like, coolest kid there. And I'm like, that's what's important. And he's never going to forget that. And we, and, and we see each other, and I walk up and go, hey, Chris, and he can tell from your walk and your smell and your handshake if you say nothing and he figure out who you are. And he's met thousands of people. And you never know. Chris is my hero. And it's important that you never lose sight of all those people that you inspire. Oop, let me move that over a little bit there, sorry. Keep learning. Optimize. Share. Having fun. 
I send out a monthly newsletter on Remind. If you want to receive it, you already have 81010. Just hit at jjonespe. If you're not going to get into Twitter, into Facebook, and all that stuff, that's your thing. Just once a month, I'll send you a digital link, and you just click it, and it'll open up for you. So if you want to get in on that, if you want to send me email, I bought it. My name, <laughs> I'm email at johnjonespe.com, and I am on Twitter. I, I welcome you to come over and take a look at these, and I thank you very much for your time, and I thank these wonderful ladies for giving me the opportunity to present for you today.